the same teaching for you to win in life, you must love uh, diligence and be diligent. For you to win in life, you must love diligence and be diligent. Now, there is a uh, scripture that I read a few days ago. You know, of course, you know that I'm, I'm not at home and I'm in a restaurant here, so people are moving about and uh, noise. But um, I think this will bless you. So about diligence. It says, if you have diligence, you cannot be, I think actually, can you believe it? This wisdom is from the Buddhist, I think, or some, somebody from India. So, which is a uh, Hindu or Buddhist or something, which is uh, amazing that God will give his wisdom to people from uh, everywhere. Because I think this is really smart. He says, if you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by wealth. Can you believe that? If you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by wealth. If you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by afflictions. If you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by poverty. If you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by people. If you have diligence, you cannot be defeated by discouragement. If you have uh, 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 diligence, you cannot be defeated by achievements. Whew, that is heavy. So poverty cannot defeat diligence. Even wealth cannot defeat it. <laughs> That means even when you are successful and you are already wealthy or you are already rich, you st if you are diligent, you are always diligent. You will continue to be diligent. Even when things, I mean, when things are already going for you, when you think that you already, you already made it and that uh, you already have money. So diligence is something that cannot be defeated by anything. And then when you are poor, poverty cannot defeat diligence. So which means that when you are poor, you can never remain poor as long as you are diligent. When you are diligent, diligent will, it will push you out of poverty. <laughs> great, great stuff, great stuff. Poverty, I mean, diligence will, 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 will remove you from that situation. You cannot be a diligent person and be, and be poor at the same time. Then it says also you cannot be defeated by discouragement. You cannot be defeated by discouragement. When you are diligent, you are not discouraged. You keep on moving forward. You keep on going for it. You keep on moving forward. You keep on striving. You keep on pushing. That is great. And when you are diligent, you will not be defeated even by your own success. So your success and achievements will not stop you from <laughs> your achievement and it will not stop you from being diligent. You keep on being the best, striving to be the best, nevertheless. So um, I think that's a good start. So, well, let's go ahead and quickly share the link today. If you don't mind, let's go and share the link today. So please go ahead, uh, look for the share button, and uh, let's share this message. Because I might have maybe just 30 minutes with you. Can you believe it? Maybe today it might be, it might be the shortest ever. It, might, it could be the shortest ever program. So I'm going to rush it for you. I'm going to keep on going and just keep on going. Uh, of course, you know, Proverbs 22, 29. I mean, 22, yeah, 19. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to, uh, if you see a man that is diligent in his, I think it's 22, 29. If you see a man that is diligent in any of his way, he will stand before kings. He will not stand before ordinary men. Uh, Proverbs 12, 24 as well. So many great scriptures about diligence. Uh, the hand of the diligent shall rule. You know, those are my favorite about diligence. If you if you if you are diligent, you God will cause you to rule. You cannot be diligent and be down somewhere. You cannot be diligent and people are ruling over you. When you are diligent, God will cause you to rule. Your hands will rule. And that uh, if you are diligent, God will not cause you. I mean, you will not you will not uh, you will not sit down amidst some ordinary people down down there. You will be sitting among the great. So these are principles, you know. And it doesn't you know you notice that here it's not saying if you are diligent, then you have to pray, and then maybe God will bless that uh, diligence or he will not bless it. That if you are diligent, uh, you have to still ask God to bless you, you know, to, to bless it and see if its word will come to pass or not. For example, it says in uh, Proverbs uh, 10, 4, that the hand of the diligent shall, 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 mm, shall, uh, shall be wealthy, shall make wealth, while the, the, the poor 
I mean, the lazy shall be poor. So if it says that the hand of the diligent make it rich, the hand of the diligent make it rich, it doesn't say that, you know, if you are a believer, then the hand of the diligent will make rich for you. If you are not a believer, then it will not make rich for you. Or if you are a Buddhist, it will make rich, it will not make rich for you unless you are a Christian. He didn't say that though. He said anybody, any human, any individual, anywhere, if you are diligent, that diligent hand will cause you to come out of poverty. That diligent hand will cause you to attain riches. Diligence brings to success. Dil diligence brings to prosperity. So it is it is a giving will bring you to prosperity. Diligence, the hand of the diligent, is what is going to cause you to be rich. And so, and it's not discriminative. It's not saying that, okay, yeah, if you are diligent, and no matter how diligent you are, you still have to be coming to God every time and saying, bless me, or bless me, or if you don't bless me, you know, I don't know what we'll do. No, he has committed. So, it's not about man. It's not about your religiosity. It's not even about your belief. It's not even about if you believe in him or you don't believe in him. This is about God's standard. And God's standard is is that he commits to his ways. He commits to his words. He is a man of integrity. God is a God of integrity. Integrity means that he says what he means and he does what he says. So if he has said it, he's going to do it to anybody. So it is about him. It is about his own priority and it's about his own um, his own reputation. So when he says that the hand of the diligent make a tree, he does not go back on that. Anywhere he finds that diligence, no matter how poor the country is, or as long as you are, if you are diligent, it doesn't matter. God will cause the law. In fact, you don't even need to pray. You don't even need to remind him of his word at all. Because he has programmed it into nature. He has programmed it into the air. He has programmed it into the waters. He has programmed it into the, into the sea. He has programmed it into the land. He has programmed it into agriculture. He has programmed it into computer science. He has programmed this principle into every sphere of life that you could imagine. That whenever you find diligence, whenever you find anyone that is diligent, that, this, the, that diligence will begin to work for him like a machine. It's like a magic, actually. So it's it's not that you are going to now be calling God and God and praying to him so that he will make his word come to pass. No, his word is going to come to pass by all means. Why? Because at the foundation of the earth, why God was still creating the earth itself, he, uh, he said that uh, his, his word was tried. He, he was tried in fire several times over. Every word of his has been tried that, and, and it has been established in heavens. It's that word, the word of God is established in heavens, is established on the earth, is established, established under the earth, is established in, on, on every planet on any uh, galaxies everywhere that you could imagine the word of God is established there. So anybody that complies as long as you comply, the world begins to work for you like a magic. So that is why we are made to live by principles. We are called to live by principles on the earth, not by not 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 by magic and not by you know assumptions and not by uh, wishful thinking and not even by prayers or not even by by you know you know by calling on the name of God all the time because that's why he said that he has exalted his word above his name. So it's not about you praying calling upon his name anymore. No no no. He it's not conditional. You know, he didn't say that it is when, you know, you do this and this, that the hand of the rich, I mean, the hand of the diligent will make rich. No, you just need to fulfill that condition of being diligent. As long as you are diligent, oh, you, 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 I mean, even in the nature, every force of nature will begin to work for you. So that's why it doesn't matter if a Nigerian, mm, a Nigerian Christian has been praying three hours a day and, 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 and fasting 40 days a year and he's going to the church three months a time and praying every day and doing fasting and praying new year crossover uh 70 days of fasting and prayer 100 days and he does everything but he's not diligent at work nature will not respond to him so it's even god will not respond to him because it will be unfair and it will be violating the integrity of god it will be violating the laws of god and god will be contradicting himself so god doesn't work like that he is not Pasha. He is not, uh, you know, he's not going to, you know, be, he's not conditional. He's not changing his mind by any, you know, swing of a, I mean, as if, if, uh, by any swing of a uh, swing or something. He, so he doesn't just change and his opinion like that, that, okay, you have done something. So he, then, you know, uh, God is, is stationary. I mean, his conditions and his words are established. Establishment means 
it is established it is there all the time so it is uh, it's not like that it's you know it's r relative so today uh okay he said okay i'm established today but since you are uh since you are good and since you are uh since you are you know you you pray so much and uh, since you are coming to do this and that to me i am going to you know just change this condition even though you don't work even though you are not trying even though you have not tried your best uh well you know you are my child no if you are his child you will go to heaven yes you will have some other things that he has promised his child yes but that is because that's what he has said concerning his child but when it comes to prosperity on the earth when it comes to advancing on the earth when it comes to ruling on the earth when it comes to winning on the earth which is what we are talking about when it comes to winning on the earth you've got to learn to function like he said you've got to be diligent so what is diligence to be diligent is to be persistent and hard working and smart at the same time so let me say that another way to be diligent is to be hard working to be persistent and to be smart at the same time now if you want to have a more beautiful definition diligence is a persistent and hard working effort a persistent and a hard working effort that is culminated by working smart or by smart working persistent and hard working effort working smartly So you could be diligent in different ways. Diligence is not just in work. I mean, in work, physical work. You could be diligent in thinking. You could be diligent in self-development. You could be diligent in self-improvement. You could be diligent in motivation. You could be diligent in being truthful. You could be diligent in being faithful. You could be diligent in being thorough. You could be diligent in security. You should know everything. If you are diligent anything in any small thing, you are diligent anywhere. If you are diligent in any area, if you are a diligent person, it will show in everything you do. You will be diligent. You will not just be diligent at work and at home you are nothing. <laughs> you not just work in school when you are a student and then when you graduate you say you never work and you never read anymore you know a diligent person a person is cons cons consistent is persistent is hard working all the time and he is, is diligent not just physically working but is diligent intellectually is working smart as well so diligent is not just doing things right but when you are diligent, you don't just do things right, but you do things expeditiously as well. You, are, you do things expeditiously. You are able to do the right thing at the right time. You are able to make the right choices. When you are diligent, you are able to analyze and be able to actually decide which decision is best right now and what is the best thing to do at this particular time or the other. When you are diligent, you are working not just uh, you know, you are working not just expeditiously, but you are working conscientiously as well. That means you are working from all your heart. That means you are working in such a way that it, it, it lines up with your conscience. When you are diligent, your conscience is your, is your parole. Your conscience is your, um, is your, uh, is your, uh, what do you call it? Compass. Your conscience is your compass. You you work in according to the dictate of your conscience. You work in according. In a, you will not even allow yourself to relax or do less than your conscience will permit you. Your conscience does not allow you to do to go to go lower or to lower the standard. Your conscience will not allow you to do less than you are capable of. That is all about being diligent. When you are diligent, you also are efficient. Why? Because you work. 
you work uh, with 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 effectively. You you are effective. You are efficient. You are efficient and you are effective at the same time. So diligence delivers the highest standard possible, regardless of what is demanded or expected. Even when the people that you are working for don't expect the highest standard, you still deliver it anyway. That is why, because diligence is working only to please its maker. Diligence is only working to satisfy its conscience. That's why diligence is always conscientious. It's coming from the heart. It's, con it's in accordance to the person's conscience. So you are not looking at even the salary they are paying you. You are not even looking if they are paying you any salary or they are not paying you any salary. You are always doing your best at all times. And diligence also means that uh, you are diligent at improving yourself. You are diligent at acquiring skills. You are diligent at improving those skills. So when you work, you do the best you can do with the set of skills that you have. And when you know that your skills, your skills are not enough, you go and get the best of the skills. So when you see, so who are the people that win in life? And that's what I'm talking about. Who are the people who win in life? If somebody will work like that, do you think the person will not win? Of course, the person will win in life. Even if he doesn't know what he, 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 he's starting to do, because he's diligent, his nature demands that he goes to research. His nature demands that he goes to improve himself. The, it, his nature of diligence demands that he goes to do self-education. So it is, and, and this is not a born quality. You don't, you don't get born with it. You develop it. It's an acquired quality. It's a quality and it's that you could acquire. It's something that you could, but mediocre, the mediocre mindset, when they allow you to say, oh, anything goes, oh, uh, no, don't worry. Okay, you've tried. Okay, no problem. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, not bad. All those kind of attitudes, they don't push you. And they, they don't develop in you uh, excellence. They don't develop in you diligence. But for you to develop diligence in yourself, you must be able to put some pressure on yourself, some demand, demand for excellence, for the highest standard. Why? Because diligence delivers the highest standards at all times. The highest standard even when nobody is seeing it. The highest standard even nobody, when nobody requires it. The highest standard even upon him own, his own self. He delivers the highest standard even in preparing himself. He delivers the highest standard regarding his own secret and you know, secret life that he doesn't, he's not obliged to anybody. So, the, the, regardless of what is expected or regardless of what is demanded, he, de he demands of himself excellence anyway. So, and you know, you could always improve on excellence, I mean, on diligence, because diligence is something that you could always improve on, it's something that you could always, uh, you know, you could always perfect. So, 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 you know, it's not, it, since it's a learnable skill, you, you can learn it, you could, you, could, you could develop on it, you could improve on it. Diligence combines creative persistence with smart working, rightly planned effort, rightly performed and uh, efficient and uh, effective efforts. So, diligence is a combination of creativity. Diligence is a combination of creativity, persistence, hard work, smart working, planned work, timely work, effectively and effectively executed work. Amazing quality. Amazing quality. That's why you cannot be diligent and be a failure. You cannot be a diligent person, thoroughly diligent. Oh, not be saying, you say, ah, he's working hard. <laughs> you, you are supposed to not just work hard. You are supposed to work diligently. You are supposed to be a diligent person. And diligent people rule in life. Like I said, you know, yesterday, we, I mean, this whole week we are talking about who wins in life or who rules in life, who wins in life. For you, when it comes to life, I'm not saying when you've gone to heaven or, or what it takes for you to go to heaven. I'm saying here on earth while you are still here. What does it take for you to win? What does it take for you to rule? And what it takes is, number one, you have to be swift. And we spoke about that yesterday morning. You have to be swift. Now, no, the, no, no, the next thing that uh, you, you have to uh, do, you have to have, is what we are talking about today. You have to have diligence. 
you have to be diligent for you to win in life. And all this week, I'm going to be giving you different qualities of all what it takes to always win in life. And when you are that, when you have all those, not just the, not just in, in isolation, because if you are diligent and then you don't add swiftness to it, you don't learn to do things quick and fast, you'll be left behind even though you are diligent. So all these things, all these qualities are not standing alone. All these qualities have to be put together in one person. You have to combine and have all these things all these values in you. Tonight I'll talk about another one. Tomorrow I'll talk about another one. Until we, you know, I'll give you a whole package so that you will discover that God has already made everything for your success and for your blessing and for your provision this week. So it's not that you have to go and be sleeping in church for three months or pray, go giving offering and tithe to everybody and you know giving some, you know, go asking for anointing uh, oil or anointing, you know, your head or something to anoint you or to bless you. You know, God has already made all provisions for all of us to actually excel in life, to rule and reign in life for him, and to be able to subdue the earth for him and for his glory. So you don't need to go and be looking and be doing some gimmicks, especially. You don't need to go and be asking for favor. No, no, no. You are not asking for favor from man. You are not even asking for favor from God. I mean, and it's not because I'm, you know, when I say things that like people say, ah, no, 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 ah, don't rely on your understanding. No, it's not about relying on understanding. This is the subject, you know. If you listen last week to my, uh, to my messages on laws, the earth is made to function by laws and principles. And so God himself is the one who made it all. I'm just telling you what he said, what he made. He made it in such a way that you don't even need to be at his own mercy. You don't even need to go and be dependent on him or be coming to beg him to do one thing, to act or not to act. He has made everything perfect. He has made everything to be good. And like I said yesterday, you know, uh, he, you know, when he created, finished, finished creating man and woman, he said he blessed them. He blessed them. So that blessing, it doesn't need to be renewed. That blessing doesn't need to be coming to. It doesn't need to be coming to do it every time. Just like it doesn't need to be coming to touch the woman and be putting womb inside every woman's womb and say, okay, you will be a woman uh, every this one. You will not be a woman this one. No, it is already blessed. A woman is already blessed once and for all to be fruitful, and that means that you know. You know, she, you know, you don't need to create her or, you know, do something to her to be fruitful. She just needs to sleep with a man and that's all. She'll be fruitful. And, uh, you know, there are, of course, exceptions. We know about that. But, you know, that's what I'm saying. That, every, you know, it's just like creativity and reproduction is, is automatic because God bless one time only. He doesn't repeat himself like that, though, because he's so thorough. God himself is so diligent. He's so thorough. In fact, all the trees and everything we see, they keep on growing. Why? Because God has blessed them one time only. And he has said it is good. What he said is good, good one time. You don't need the second time <laughs> for him to come and try to correct it or work on it. So God has already put everything. You only need to observe his laws and principles. He has already put everything that is required and needed for you to be able to rule and reign in life. And one of those laws is diligence. Um, Diligence delivers to you results that are pure. Diligent person doesn't want to cheat. A diligent person doesn't like to cheat his way to success or to results. A diligent person doesn't want to maneuver. A diligent person doesn't want to be deceptive. A diligent person doesn't want to lie to make to get his way. A diligent person doesn't want to scheme anybody. A diligent person doesn't want to be a, a fraudster, defraud anybody. You know, a diligent person is so thorough that it depends mainly on his diligence, on his thoroughness. So a diligent person delivers an excellent result. A diligent person does not just deliver excellent results, but it delivers a pure result. Is that not beautiful? <laughs> I think that is beautiful. I think that's beautiful. So a diligent person doesn't like shortcuts. A diligent person doesn't like, you know, you know, shortcuts and you know deceptive ways of operation. A diligent person does his best at all times. And a diligent person will make sure that he delivers the highest quality to, to the bidder. A diligent person will put the highest demand on himself to deliver the highest quality of accept of excellence in everything he or she does now i'm sorry that i'm rushing today because you know 
I'm on my way to court. Uh, I have uh, I've been in court for eight years, you know, defending my name and reputation. People accuse me of all kind of dirty stuff. And uh, I said I would not leave Ukraine until I clear my name. So I am uh, in court, and I'm not traveling because of that, because I want to clear my name. I want to prove to the world that I'm not what people say that I am. And, uh, and so the, the lower court have given us the victory, and they have said that the accusations that they brought against me were all false and uh, baseless. But, you know, some people and the government uh, appealed it. So today is appeal court. We had it last time. Another one is today. I mean, they postponed it today. So, um, so you know, that was supposed to start. Uh, let me see. How many more minutes left? That's supposed to be starting now, actually. But I'm, I'm believing, I'm using my faith to say they would delay a little bit. <laughs> and so maybe we have delay so that we'll be able to deliver to you one hour uh, something. But if not, I might finish at any time from now if they call me. Uh, it's just across the road, so I would just go in there. But, um, but yeah, so I'm, trying, so I'm going to rush and give you fast result and uh, quick uh, something. Uh, I can't on put it on. Ah, okay. So be on patom more at once now. So no matter, Okay, now let me give you uh, another uh, subtitle to this. I'm going to rush and give you as much as possible before I go, right? So let me give you some benefits, benefits of diligence. One, you see, it is always in human nature, right, to follow. Uh, the path of least resistance or less resistance or least resistance. So that is normal for humans. We have flesh and uh, we are human. So all of us want that sometimes. But a diligent person is having a tendency of living by his conscience. So because he has the tendency of always demanding for, from his conscience, always demanding for himself to do the best and to follow his conscience, you will discover that like in Europe, for example, or America, you know, some people who are not even Christians, like in Europe here, there are a lot of Europeans who are not even Christians at all, I mean, who have never been in the church in their life, but they've been taught to live by their conscience, and they've been taught to do any work to the best of their knowledge. They have been taught like that. They have been groomed like that. So they have the tendency, even though they might not believe in God, but to subdue their lower nature, the lower part of their, themselves, which is, you know, cutting corners and, uh, you know, go through the um, path of least resistance. But they are used to following their conscience, so they always do their best. They will do the best quality for you. But some Christians who are church members or elders in the church or even pastors, they, you are not, they are not used to putting the demand on themselves, and they are not used to living by their conscience, even though they are pastors. So when you give them some work to do, or when they promise you something to do, they do it anyhow, just any quality, because they are not used to, they have not trained themselves to be diligent in all things. They have not put any, they are not used to putting demand on themselves and to extract the best quality from themselves. So they always go through and the part of least resistance. So going, the, either living for the, I mean, going to, uh, by conscious, live by conscience or not, is not always sometimes that you, it's because you are a Christian or not. Sometimes it's about, you know, what you have been trained in. And so to be diligent, it's not always Christians that are going to be diligent. Sometimes the unbelievers could be diligent if they have been trained to live according to their conscience. So because only when you live according to your conscience, you can be diligent. So people who are, uh, you know, being trained to live by their conscience, they don't try to choose the path of least resistance most of the time. They always take the hard way, even if they are going to pay a higher price. They always do their best because they are used to, you know, doing things to the best of their knowledge. And that is they are used to living by their own conscience. Okay, so next thing, uh, next advantage or benefit of diligence is that diligence will always reward. Like it says that the hand of the diligent shall rule. The hand of the diligent shall rule. Amazing. Diligence always brings reward. Diligence always brings leadership. Diligence always makes you the head. Diligence is one of the surest way of becoming the head and not the tail. Becoming the first and not the last. Diligent person will always come ahead. 
and also, you know, uh, Hebrews 11, uh, 6, say by faith, nobody can, I mean, without faith, nobody can, uh, can, you know, can please God. But because it's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Who diligently, this is one of the uh, passages that made me to be practicing solitude. Because, you know, I used to fast and pray before then. I used to just to fast and pray. And when I'm fasting and praying, I'm going by my own daily duties and daily businesses. And, you know, you are fasting and praying, then you are going to work. You are fasting and praying, then you are running up and down you don't even have too much time to pray more than two hours a day when you are fasting and praying but you are so busy with engage with it but when i read that scripture that ah that's the secret eh? so he rewards <laughs> only those ones who diligently seek it eh? so when i'm seeking god and i'm fasting i'm praying so i really have to really pay the price of diligence when i'm praying it has to really be diligent. Ah. So that's when I say, okay, now when I'm going to fast, I'm going to lock myself in the house. I'm going to lock myself in the room. I'm not going to see anybody. I'm going to be totally seeking diligently. Diligent, you know, seeking him diligently means seeking him with focus. Seeking him, in, seeking him with gusto. Seek, seeking him with focus, with, with determination, with, you know, you know with, with concentration. So I say, ah, so if he rewards only those ones who diligently. So it's a principle that it is what you do diligently with all your best, with all your heart. It is when you do anything like that with such diligence, when you seek to be diligent in all things that you do, that God acts, God reacts. It begins to cause rewards to come your way. It, 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 it could either be in business, it could either be in any other thing, when you do what you do with diligence, when you begin to commit your heart to what you do and you seek to do, to do it diligently, you seek to do it to the best of your knowledge, God obliges himself to reward you. He's a rewarder of those kind of people. Ah, so, you mean... God is not just a rewarder of everybody. No, 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 no. It's not a rewarder of slothfulness. It's not a rewarder of, uh, of indolence. It's not a rewarder of laziness. It's not a rewarder of in, in insolence. It's not a rewarder of, of people who just do things anyhow and, you know, without, without conscience or with, and without commitment. Jesus God is a rewarder only of one category of people, of those who seek diligently of those who commit diligence to their efforts who do anything they do with diligence of those who commit diligence to any efforts they are making is a rewarder of those who diligently seek it in proverbs In Proverbs 21, verse 6, it, it tells us that diligence gives advantage in any situation. I mean, it's just like saying somebody comes to me to look for a job or to serve around me, and then the person is sleeping from morning to night, and I come to work maybe once a week, or he works only, only for like four hours a day or two hours a day, and he cannot commit himself. He cannot really, you know. Uh, and then I have another one that, you know, we work. 18 hours a day and do the best of his uh, efforts and you know be around every day of the week. So which one do you think I will take? Is it the one that is sleeping half the day or through hours and never you can never get him, or the one that is always there that never misses a meeting that is always? Of course, it is only the diligence I will take, and it's not the labio. Any human being that has sense in his head, even he will abandon his own child, he will even you know, bypass his own blood children to give the work to the diligent. Why? It's a law. Even a wicked leader, a wicked manager, a wicked director cannot bypass diligence. If you are diligent enough and you show more and more diligence, you make yourself indispensable. Make yourself indispensable. That was saying in Proverbs 21 5. If you are diligent, that diligence will give you an advantage anytime, any day. You will be ahead at all times. I short in English. Um, you will be ahead at all times. You will be ahead at all times. Now, another thing, you, another uh, benefit or advantage of 
diligence is in Proverbs 12, 24. It says, you will be, through diligence, you will be in control of in any situation. You will be on top and not under. You will be on top and not under. You will be on top and not under. Diligence will make you to be in control, to be over and not under. And diligence will find a way for you eventually. You know, people might make, you know, there are always some, uh, you know, misjudgments and uh, abuse of judgment, uh, justice, things like that could happen. But eventually, diligence will find a way for you. Just like he did for Joseph now. You know, there were injustice and, you know, uh, misappropriation, misappropriation of justice and all that. And he was put in prison. But she diligence found him in that prison and made him the top. When he was a slave, diligence found a way for him and made him the top. So, diligence will always get you out of any situation. By the way, if you have not yet shared this link, I think this message is going to be, is going to be monumental. This message is going to be um, historical, and as, and I think uh, the truth here is going to be classical. It's going to be evergreen. So, because I'm putting so much in, <laughs> I'm rushing, to, <laughs> so that if I need to go, you, I know I've given you, I've done my best, I've given you my best, and as much as possible. And I'm also working for yesterday and today. So, uh, go and share this message. So, uh, call on your people, or your friends, and if you have not shared it, look under the video. And you see the share button, the share option, and I just go and press that share option and share share uh, thing, and then you could share it, and um, yep, share it and try some things there. Let people know it's important. Let your children especially know, and your your younger ones know that this quality is what will make a way for them. Not luck, not miracles, not anointing, not breakthrough, not prophetic declaration, but diligence will make a way for them any day, any time. Next one, according to um, Proverbs 13, 4, di diligence will cause you to have to come to fulfillment. True diligence will be fulfilled in life. You'll be able to, because for us to fulfill, all of us have command, command, I mean, I have a, uh, a task to, be, to fulfill in life. We have uh, the mandate to fulfill one mission or the other, one calling or the other. So for you to fulfill your own calling in life, you must be diligent. It is diligent that will cause you to come to fulfillment. That is according to Proverbs 13.4. Then, of course, you've heard of the Proverbs 22.29. Pro, 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 diligence will cause you to stand before kings and not before mean men, ordinary men. Then Proverbs 28.19 says, diligence always brings satisfaction. Diligence will bring satisfaction to you. Diligence will bring satisfaction to you. And then uh, in Proverbs uh, uh, thirteen eleven, diligence brings ever increasing, ever increasing. That is a continual success. And success that will con continue to increase. Continual success, ever increasing success. And that's what diligence does. And uh, of course, it brings prof it brings a profit. Diligence always leads to profit. Diligence always leads to profit. Now. Let me quickly touch on what are the consequences of lack of diligence. <laughs> One, if you are not diligent, if you are that means you are lazy. That means you are indolent. Or e yes, and if that's the case, according to Proverbs twenty-one five, diligence will lead you to poverty. Diligence, or, I'm sorry, lack of diligence will lead you to poverty. Lack of diligence will lead you to poverty. Then Proverbs twenty-one twenty-four. Uh, lack of diligence will make you to be under people. You will always work under others. You will never rule. You will always be under people. So you'll be put under forced labor, under forced labor, because someone that is not diligent, that his work is not speaking for him, somebody has to always be on top of him to control him. So because they are not sure of your quality, they are not sure of the quality of work that you will do, they will always be on top of you. They will always put manager, administrator, and supervisor on top of you. So you will always be put under forced labor. Uh, then next one, uh, Proverbs 13, 14, you know, you will not find solace because there is no satisfaction in lazy work. There is no satisfaction in uh, on unfulfilling work. So the work that you do that you have not given your best, you will not be satisfied. Even if you manage to get paid, there will be no joy. There will be no depth of satisfaction in you. So you will not really find solace. But job and work, hard work gives solace. Diligence brings people to solace, comfort. 
but you will not have comfort. You will not be comforted. You will always be. You will not be contented. You will not be content, content because you will, you will always be thinking that something is lacking. You don't have enough yet. I think it's thirteen fourteen or so, or maybe thirteen four. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs twenty eight nineteen. You know, if you don't have diligence, you will lack understanding. You will not be able to act in wisdom. You will always lack understanding and, and wisdom. You will always be deceived and you always take wrong decisions. In 13, 11, Proverbs 13, 11, if you don't have diligence, uh, you will dissipate your wealth. And the, the, and the wealth and security or blessing that God has given you uh, will be dissipated. Will be dissipated because you are not diligent enough to put the structures in place for it, to protect it. Uh, next thing, if you don't have diligence, your efforts come to nothing. People who don't have diligence, they waste their efforts. Their efforts don't yield uh, desired results. You know, you desire one and you'll be getting the next thing that you, you didn't expect. So the good thing that you expect, you'll never really get it. you never really get it. So the path, the path of least resistance always leads to need. You will always be more need. If you are uh, taking the path of least resistance, the path of least resistance will always lead to more need. You will always be needing more. You will always it will lead to more need and more want, lack. You will always lack. According to Proverbs 10, 4, diligence makes the di is the difference between the rich and the poor. He, he says, he becomes, he becomes poor who works with a slack, an idle hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. So those people who work in, a, you know, who, who, who don't work hard, they come to, you know, they were slothful in their work, who are idle, they come to poverty. In uh, Proverbs 12, 24, like I said, the hand of the diligent will rule, but the slothful will be put under forced labor. So diligence will lead to dominion, while laziness results in being dominated. You are the one who is going to be dominated. Proverbs 12, 27 says, The slothful man does not catch his game or roast it once he kills it. Hey, other people, <laughs> you'll be walking, other people will be eating. It's a dangerous place to be. So if you're not diligent, you don't even have the, the know-how to be able to finish, have a finished product or to be able to roast what the game that you you, you brought in from your hunting. Uh, you'll not be able to roast it you, you, after you have killed it. Other people will be taking it from you. Because you are not diligent enough to even be able to count or know how much you are making. Your children or your relatives or people who are borrowing left and right are the ones who will take everything from you. So diligence is necessary for be, to be able to even enjoy life and to be able to enjoy the thing you do. If you don't, you will not you won't be able to enjoy what you make. But the diligent man gets precious possession. That is Proverbs twelve twenty seven. Then in Proverbs 13, 44, again, like I have read, the appetite of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. But the appetite of the diligent is abundantly uh, supplied. What does that mean? The appetite of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. You only be living by wishes. Oh, I, I, I dream I will be a millionaire one day. Oh, I believe God. God will do it in the name of Jesus. Ah, God will bless me. I wait for favor. I wait for blessing. I wait for victory. You only be dreaming. You know how many dreamers we have in churches today? People are just dreaming that they will get this, they will get that, God will bless them, they will, will open doors, and somebody will, you know, give, open the door for them, somebody will call them from somewhere, something will happen. But <laughs> as life has proven, nothing happens. Of course, they will always put some people on the pulpit for you who will give testimony that they did this, they did that, and something happened. But they, they didn't tell you what they did apart from giving tithe and offering. They didn't tell you what they did apart from, you know, apart from going to church for a breakthrough or something. So they, they, they have probably been diligent in their work as well. So And then they are always, there's always the 2% possibility of a miracle. And, uh, and then that is what is... Okay, that is uh, another thing that some people take advantage of. They just see the two percent possibility of a miracle, 
and um, they you take those ones and use them uh, to sh to say that they are prayers. You, you can get something for nothing, but it's not true. You can still you still need to be diligent to rule in life.